Hello, everyone, and welcome to Griplock, Foundation Disc Golf's weekly podcast. I'm Hunter, joined, as always, by Trevor. And if you're watching this, we're in a little bit of a new studio, same spot, but we got a desk instead. This is a crucial change. Crucial. I think it, it, it does a lot for the show. It even should, if you're listening to us right now, be adding a little bit to your experience because we got a rug underneath us. And I think we're sounding a little better. It should be a little less echo. Yeah, I don't know. First. I'm kind of liking it. I'm kind of liking it. I'm feeling it right now. Uh, before we get into the show too much, I do want to give a shout out to uh, a program that we are starting, our Foundation Junior Grant. Mm -hmm. Basically, this is going to be for uh, anyone can apply that is eligible for 2021 Junior World Championships. Um, it'll be held in Emporia, Kansas. So 18 years old and under, if you're questionable, if you're fit into that bracket, check the PDGA out. PDJ's website out. See if you are eligible to play in the World Championships of Junior Worlds. Um, applications open tomorrow. If the, from the date we're dropping this, January eighth, they'll run until I believe it's February twelfth. Um, these details are available on our website. If you go to FoundationDiscGolf.com, scroll to the bottom of the website. There should be a little link down there that says Junior Grant. Provide you with a ton of information. Basically, we're going to be giving six players a uh, paid entry fee to Junior Worlds and a ton of other stuff from different partners including us, uh, Paul, Brody, lots of stuff. Um, so if you're interested in that or you know someone that might be interested in that, head over to our site to check it out. We're super excited to be able to provide people with this chance. But without further ado, let's hop into the actual meat of the show. So if you paid attention to us on Twitter, I don't really think we promoted this anywhere other than Twitter. Mm, are you talking about the top 20s? Yeah. No. No, yeah. I don't think so. So if you if you pay attention to us on Twitter, you'll notice that we have, uh, hun, well, I almost said Hunter and Trevor, Trevor and myself have put out our top 20s. Yes. Basically, these were based on our opinions, our speculation of what the top 20 will look like next year. Uh, we're not going to go through the entire list of who's on our top 20, but there's a few talking points that I think are drastically different between my top 20 and your top 20, and I'm just going to bring some of them up because... You Go know, we it. haven't really had a chance to talk about this, and I think what a better time than to do it on air. Sure. First off, I've got to ask the question that's probably on a lot of people's minds that have looked at your list. Why do you have Brody Smith in 20th place? Well, listen, I mean, number one, because it makes waves. <laughs> okay, valid. And every, I know everybody would be sick to their stomach reading that I put Brody in my top 20. But for the honest, like being completely honest, like we talked to Brody close to pretty much every day okay this guy does not leave the disc golf course i promise you he plays sunrise to sunset every single day like i there i would i can say with confidence that nobody is outworking him because it's impossible like unless somebody's playing in the dark because he literally plays every day like brody is athletic and frisbee talented like he already has frisbee talent so like the fact that he's playing as much as he is and practicing as much as he is I have to believe that there's a great chance. I mean, he barely had any time to practice last season. He was like, you know, he went to Waco and shot like a 10, 18 reading round. You know, like there, there's just a lot of potential there. And I want to be the guy that predicts it, you know? That is valid. I mean, I have said some some pretty shocking things about Brody on this podcast, but... You've said more shocking things about him disc golf related than I have. But like, the but way I'm not putting him in my top 20. Not right now. Yeah. Do I think he could be in my top 20 by the end of the year? Sure. I well, would I probably put him in my top 30. You said he had him like 25. Uh, yeah, thirty to twenty-five range, someone in there. Yeah, so I, just went, I just went a little more risky. I mean, I could see it. That's all it was. I could see him getting there, but my biggest thing is like, uh, there were players that you were snubbing from your list that I think deserve to be there over over uh, Brody, and one of them I accidentally snubbed from my list, Andrew Presnell. Presnell, yeah, honestly, I, I'm a, I'm going to go on record and admit I was wrong. He belongs in the top twenty. I I don't know how I missed him. I don't. He played great last season. Well, he. I just think he belongs in the top 20. I think he is a very, very, very talented player that unfortunately for some reason just gets overlooked, and I was one of the people that overlooked him. Yeah. And you I were mean, too. Well, yeah, I, I agree. I think he probably should have been, like, if I would have not overlooked him. But, there, like, if you get overlooked, there's a reason for that. <laughs> it's probably because your brand isn't quite, you know, where it should be. So what? what, what Which some guys kind of like that. What's kind of making him forgettable? 
you know, well, what, well, what's separating him? Like, why are we remembering Scott if, Withers and not Andrew Presnell? Well, Scott Withers has just been kind of a hot topic lately because he just moved brands. That's why. The only reason I'd be thinking about Scott. And the fact that's true. We'll talk about that in a second, but the fact that you put him criminally high on your list. I have a good reason for that, but we'll get I, to that in I mean, a minute. You have explanation written down, but I still don't. It's ridiculous. But Presnell is one of those players that, like, if you are more of a quiet, like, under the radar type player who isn't a Drew Gibson who's like always making his personal brand and like, you know, Drew Gibson hasn't won anything either, but you know, people know him because he's very loud in the sport, which is good. But if you're Presnell and like, you don't really, that's not your thing. And you're kind of just under the radar. The only way people are going to know you and remember you is if you win. So if you don't win on the pro tour, even if you're placing well, people are going to see on the leaderboard and kind of just glaze over it a bit. So that's, I mean, that's valid. That's really what's happening here. And it's nothing again. Like it's, you know, it's nothing against Presnell. It's just like, I'm going to be honest. That's why I looked overlooked you. And, yeah. And I mean, prove me wrong. Win. You know? Yeah. I, I honestly, he's a player that I admittedly forget about a lot. And I don't know. I think it's what you're saying right there. It's like, he, he is active on social media. He's he's one of the more active pros on Twitter, I found out. He's not a long-time name on tour either. No. That's another thing, too. There's some guys like him, Marweed, uh, Roethlisberger, guys like that, that... Like, talent wise, are they're up talent there. wise, they're up there, but like they're just not quite. They haven't been a staple on tour long enough. Like Drew Gibson's been around forever, as my example. Yeah, Nico LaCastro been around for ever. Philo been around forever. So it's a lot easier to remember those right, players, right? Exactly. So like they'll eventually we'll know them. Uh, another person, which eventually you can bring up stuff about my list too. But while we're talking about people who've been on tour forever, someone that I thought was pretty high on your list. I don't remember. I know he's on my list, but I don't think he's in my top ten. Is Nate Sexton? You See, had him eighth place on your you list. Made it, you made it sound like it was egregious that he was eighth on my list and he's thirteenth on your list. He's only five spots behind. It's a big five spots. It is a big five spots, but my made, thing, I have nothing wrong with. I think if Nate Sexton is playing Nate Sexton golf, he's a top six player. That's what I'm saying, Nate Sexton. But we haven't seen him in a year. Well, not Nate even, Sexton's game. First of all, he's such a veteran that like he's not losing much. He's also he's also a guy that's always been pretty mentally solid. So I'm not expecting him to have the yips. Yeah. And so I expect him to be able to shake off rust pretty quickly. And I know he plays such a consistent game. His forehand is so accurate. Great putter. And like he's just going to he's gonna make a ton of pars and make a ton of top tens. That's what I said. I don't know that he's going to win anything. Maybe he'll win one. But like he's going to make a lot of top tens because he stays in bounds. He plays his game. And like I think he'll be able to shake off the rust. We'll quickly. find out if that's true. I think by the end of the season, heck yeah. But like going into this season, how how long is it going to take him to shake off the rust? I don't think it'll take that long. It'll be interesting. He has been playing good in nobody, Oregon. Everybody's schedules and everything has been so interrupted that nobody's in full swing right now, game-wise. I don't think so. Well, no one's in full swing going into the season. Ever. That's what I'm saying. So like, I don't think it's that much. I just think advantage. eighth place, I mean, I don't know. That's I don't have pretty, a problem with placing him ahead of... Like when you're a veteran like that and you have such a resume, I don't have a problem placing you ahead of guys like Adam Hammes, for example. Yeah, Kyle Klein's, you know. I can, I mean, like I said, I can I can see you being right in the long term. I think starting the season, Nate Sexton is not the eighth best player in the world right now. He could be skill wise, he could be mentality wise, and he might perform that well. But I think that we just don't have anything to base it on right now. He, well, he just that's hasn't the whole played. Point of the two he early top twenty. I, I mean, that's that is everybody true. on the list. That is true, to a certain degree. But I don't know. I, I feel like anyone you question me about, I can back up my reasoning for them being there. I mean, there's only there's only two that are like a bit shocking. Scott Weathers at ten is egregious. I mean, he's in your top twenty, isn't he? He I think he's nineteen. Okay, well, check that's that. horrid. First off, the guy's that. 1040 rated. I don't, I don't want to bring I don't want to bring ratings yeah. into it at all. You but don't have to because being ridiculous. 1040 rated at local rated events that should not be overlooked. I'm overlooking it. Okay, well, you can overlook it all you want. You can't overlook what he's doing in the Northwest, in Oregon. The the guy, But the guy shows up and is just absolutely annihilating everyone. He's playing insanely good golf, and he's playing it consistently. He's staying in his spot. Therefore, he knows the course is better. The the competition, nobody's talking about it. Therefore, there's less pressure. I will say— The different stage. I would not— if I was not right, have so basically the reason he's in tenth place on my list is solely so I could write out an explanation. If if I was doing a list like regardless, I'd probably put him like twelfth. I would not put him nineteenth. Okay, well, he case. would still be far up there. So I didn't I didn't jump him five spots to get him into where I could explain, but I wanted him high enough that I could explain it. 
because I just I, can't throw him ahead of so many proven guys. Who? Well, let me let me just throw a couple names in there. Yeah, do guys it. like guys like Coling, Conrad, Scott Will Withers. Barry. Stop after your first one, Scott Withers, and I, I will be on the record. Scott Withers is going to smack Jeremy Coling around this year. You don't know that. I he's do. He's never played on the Pro Tour. He's played some on the Pro Tour. A if little he, bit, he, but he's never I don't played even know if he, First off, I don't even know if he's going to fully tour this year. So let's take that into effect. We, we, I don't even know. I don't even know if he's going to fully tour. <laughs> what are you but doing then? <laughs> I just think that, and this is no offense to Jeremy Colling. Jeremy Colling gets slandered a lot, but he put together some decent finishes last year. If it is not a forehand-friendly course, I do not have confidence in Jeremy Colling. Okay, but that's that's fine. You say a lot of, a lot of like say that about a lot of guys but that's why i don't even is calling even on my top 20 i don't even remember to be honest with i don't you. think he is but i don't think he is yeah and I don't, I'm, I'm good like i'm if happy you about remember that. calling was i love in Jeremy the Cole. finale last year and like made you know a decent splash in the finale too but it, so the finale thing to me is just like if you're in the finale you have to be a top what top 32 top 32 so you're already only you know you're already <laughs> in a decent spot there but that that's players playing on the tour Another player you can make an argument for is Andrew Fish. He's the same type of player as Scott Withers, where he's just not on tour. I, yeah. If he was on tour, I think he's beating Jeremy Colin regularly. I just, I don't know. I don't like, I like weighing more heavily in the favors of the guy that are touring and playing every single event. I feel like there's more, it's more. Well, is this a top 20 pro tour fair. ranking or is this a top 20 world ranking? I'm, I'm, I'm going more pro tour is kind of where I was leaning towards. I use the pro tour to factor most of my things. That's where everyone was at. But yeah. I'm saying like. I, I wasn't going to snub tour, someone. I think a pro, pro tour. tour and world ranking is the same thing to me because if you're not playing on the pro tour, then you're not playing the best players. I mean, so yes and no. Therefore, it's 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 comparing apples to oranges. I don't care if you're smacking around your local event. You're on the same card as the best players in the world. It's such. It's so different. I'm fairly confident that Scott Withers, if he's playing on the tour, can can be pushing top fifteen finishes left and right. I mean, if you, you, local tournaments are hard to rate at. That's just a fact. They're harder to rate at. There's no, I, there's no doubt in my mind. Some areas have stronger ratings, but to be 1040 rated and be dominating Oregon right now, really the whole Pacific Northwest, that to me that yeah, he might have some little jitters when he gets on the, the pro tour. And like but, I didn't have a problem throwing him on my list. It's just unproven to put him at that high. It's, he's unproven. On the Pro Tour, <coughs> playing the best players in the world on the hardest courses in the world. Brody Smith is on your list, 20, 20th. You want to talk about unproven? Yeah, 20th. he's great. He's not he's 10th. Filthy. Yeah, but I'm saying like... I said I didn't have a problem putting somebody who's unproven high up on the list. And I'm not comparing Scott Withers to Brody Smith. I'm just saying, if you're straight up going... Like, like if you're going to... If you're going to base this all about He's like your wild card pick and you snuck him in at 10. Like, if you have kind of a, a unsure wild card pick, you throw I'm him not in unsure. The, I'm not sure the, unsure about Scott Withers. You don't know. You don't know what he's going to do. I'm not unsure about Scott Withers. I'm pretty confident in Scott Withers. Dude, I mean, if Scott I could be Withers, putting it in a, Scott, I could be putting my faith in a boat with tons Scott of holes Withers, in it. But if Scott Withers lays an egg this year, you're gonna have a lot to answer for. It. I will, I will. And if he doesn't, at least I had him on my list. It's not like I, it's not like I completely threw him off. Yeah, I was just sneaking him in there. I don't know though, man. I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty confident. We'll Scott see. Withers. We will, we will see, we will see. And I, I, back to the Brody Smith comments. I do think he'll sneak into the top twenty this year, but I was not putting him in my top twenty. Because Somebody had to do it. there's you, nothing to back that up the, right now. You didn't have the guts. I'll tell you what's backing it up. Every time I text him, he's saying, "Hold on, I'll, I'm on the course right now." There's a lot That's of guys. There's a lot of guys always on the course. No, I agree. Brody I've never has seen gotten, anything like it. Brody has gotten <laughs> way better, drastically better. I think he will make more noise on the pro tour than people think this year. But I just couldn't put him in the top twenty right now. I could. You did. What was the other? Who who else was shocking on my list? You said there was two. Oh, the other. The, this one wasn't as shocking, but the other one that was like, I was pretty bamboozled by was Ricky at one. Oh, okay. Well, that's an easy, easy explanation. So our top six is actually the same. Yeah, they're just, everyone's top six is going to be the same. The top six players in the world are pretty obvious. Pretty right cemented, now. yeah. Um, but let me, okay. Let me explain why Ricky's first here. I based this heavily on D Glow on. So like the second half of the season, the majority of the season, to be honest with you, second half of the season, when you compare him to every other play hit player near him from D glow on, it's not close. It's not. Okay. You look at, I literally went through and compared his, where he was finishing to where Paul was finishing, where he was finishing to where Eagle, whoever, Paul was the next closest. That's why Paul is my second place player. But when you go straight, what spot did he come into? What spot did he come in? Ricky was beating him by the end of D glow by like three or four spots. So, not like average, but like total. When you aggregated them, Paul beats him by a few here, Ricky beats him here. 
that was a lot closer than some of the other players, but Ricky was, at, since D'Glo on, I got this written down, since D'Glo on, his worst finish was fifth at the Tour Championships, if yeah. you even want to count that. I mean... Other I, than that, if you don't factor that in, his worst finish was fourth place at Idlewild. I agree, finished strong, and that's why, like, I'm not shocked at that pick. I'm just saying, if I have those two head-to-head, I'm still taking Paul. That's why I have Paul first. Uh, another thing I factored in, too, is... I, I feel like... If they're tied on the lead card at Worlds... No, if they're tied... If, if, I have Paul, so therefore I have to have him number one on my list. I agree with that statement. If they're tied if they're tied on the lead hypocrite. card, I'm going with Paul. <laughs> you hypocrite. No, but I but I still stand that starting this season, I think Ricky is coming in as the number one player. That's a tough statement to make. I don't think it is, because I'm also looking at... And this could be wrong. This could be not backed by, by facts at all, but my gut what a, feeling... <laughs> what a statement to lay down. My gut plain. feeling is that, like... The Las Vegas challenge, I feel like Ricky's stronger at than Paul coming out of the gates. I feel like Ricky has a better chance at winning that. You might be true. I'd say Heimberg has a better chance. Heimberg than has all a great chance at winning it, too. That's Heimberg's first national tour win yeah. back in the day. So Heimberg I'm has a great sure chance. What. Eagle has a great chance at winning Las Vegas. No. Yes, he does. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. I mean, that's ridiculous to say he doesn't have a chance at winning that. I didn't say he doesn't have a chance. Who, who, okay, so Las Vegas challenge way in advance. Who are you picking to win? Who's walking away with Calvin you? Calvin Heimberg. Okay, that's valid. Who's coming in second? Brody Smith. Paul. <laughs> Paul. See, nah, it's going to be Calvin. I mean, Calvin, Paul, Ricky are probably going to go one, two, three. Like, you know what's crazy to me? Like, I bet you, I would bet 60 to 70% of events this year, Calvin, Paul, Ricky, if all of them are healthy and playing they're going to finish one so, two three in some order let me know if my my logic here is they're just like is so not good. solid or if this doesn't make sense because the bottom three of that six are really good but just a little too weak so i pick i still have ricky coming in as the number one player over paul i stand by that statement based on how he finished last year okay, okay. when i'm looking at that that's what i'm basing that on okay but if calvin finishes i'm expecting paul to come in second over ricky like if calvin's winning does that make sense that makes I think it makes less sense because Paul plays more aggressive. He's not. He's more likely to come in third than he is second because he's going to play aggressive for the win and drop strokes. So that made no sense. And I don't he, know. I just you know like, that's true. It, I, that's why I'm like I don't know if this makes sense, but that's how I feel. Like I feel like wh- no matter who wins, I, I'm expecting if it's not Paul for Paul to be in second. If that makes sense. Doesn't. Okay. Well, <laughs> regardless. Heavily flawed. <laughs> uh, coming out soon will be our FPO top ten. Probably not as controversial. I wouldn't think because no. the top few, I feel like we're going to be the same. No. I have a few players that I think might sneak higher than they do on your list, but I feel like our list will probably be identical as far as who the top 10 are. I mean, and then the order might be a little the bit. top, the top, like the top three are unquestionable pretty much. And, yeah. And then like the next couple aren't really, I have one sneaking into my top know. five that I don't even know if be on your top 10. Why are they? Are they from Finland? No, I will have some Finnish players. That's on what mind. I'm saying. Like those are the tough ones for me because those people deserve to be on the list, but I just don't really know what to do. Yeah, I mean, Evelina and Henna are going to be high on my list, but no, there's one one player. I'm not going to I'm not going to spoil it till it comes out. But there's one player that I I'm I'm very confident in this year. Won't even be on my list. I don't know if she. Will. I bet you it's Courtney Cannon. No, I don't know anything about no, Courtney okay, Cannon. I, don't know I just threw it out there. Uh this was also a massive week for some sponsorship moves. Um. Prodigy basically announced their full team. Um, Prodigy, Prodigy acting like it's 2017 or whatever, just <laughs> drafting the the All Star team. Yeah, uh, but before that, I think this this move I think is pretty big. It's actually a kind of a two person move. One, they Innova moved. There's actually wow, three persons. Three persons. Three people. Innova moved Valerie Mandicano up to the star team. Yeah. That, I feel like, is a great move by them. Is she going to be touring full-time? Yes, year? her and her sister will be. Oh, is that who's on your list? <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky. Um, so yeah, you're not getting away with that. I think, hear me out here, I think Innova has the strongest FPO team. That's not even disputable. Because they, yeah. ha- they have both the top Finnish players, right? They have, yeah, they have, the only, only like good European player they don't have is Kristen Tatar. But, right. they, have but they have Jen uh, Allen. Valerie Jenkins, Howie Jenkins, Jen Allen, Valerie Mandahano, yeah, Evelina, Henna. Right, those two are, are so good, and then that's all, that's just their star team. And Val is is really good. She has she hasn't played out of Texas now, really. Now I don't think that an end of a player is going to be consistently winning because I think you're going to have Paige, Cat, Haley King. Right. But I think that if you like stacked up, if we're having like a team championship, they're going to all sit in the top ten. They're all going to yeah exactly. They're all going to be in contention. But is that worth anything? 
Probably not. <laughs> but um, but another thing, one thing in this situation that I found wins are a lot. almost criminal by Innova. I'm going to say it. Criminal. Criminal. I think this is insane to me. They did not promote Ellen Widboom to star team. Yeah, I saw a lot of people getting pretty stirred up about that because she basically like has done more than other players that were her, Okay, promoted. I went through her full season, right? Who was the player that got promoted ahead of her? I mean, well, Valerie did. Was, but that's the right. thing is I'm not... Some people were saying, like, how can you promote her over her? I think they both deserve it. I'm not right. upset that Valerie You're got just it like and Ellen she's, didn't. she's done these I'm saying, things. how are you snubbing her when, like, if you look at Innova's, like, reasoning for star team, they mm-hmm. have this, like, long explanation of what they expect. One of the things is winning a, a major. Right. Pretty much all their FPO hasn't done. Evelina is the only one that's done it in FPO. Valerie has done it if you include Am, Am and Junior Worlds. But if you're including FPO, she hasn't done it. Um, but if you look at Ellen Woodboom last season, right? Mm-hmm. Season literally full of wins. 63% win percentage last year. 63% of the tournament she showed up to, she walked away with a win. Including one Pro Tour victory. Yeah, I was going to say that. I don't. That number means nothing to me, really. I mean, she, I was just saying she had a dominant win. Yeah. She played a lot. She dominated a lot. And she had a Pro Tour win. She had a Pro Tour win, though. That's a big win. Honestly, yeah, it was at yeah. Idlewild. It was I a mean, tough one to win. Yeah. I a mean, very honestly, tough one to win. There's not that many Pro Tour events. Like, if you can win one and, like, still have a good season, it's not like a fluke. Like, yeah, you probably deserve to be a, a, on the start team. Yeah. And that's to me. So, I think, because part of it could be, like, you know, her contract's not up and Innova's going to promote her next right, year. Right. I'm not sure how that stuff works. I would promote her in the middle of the year. I don't see why. Excuse me. I don't see why. Like you have to wait for the contract to run up to promote her from team champion to team star. I also don't know the benefits yeah, between that's, them both. That's the tricky thing. Like, is it an automatic minimum pay? Like, yeah. But knows? regardless, if Innova's not going to give it to her, she could definitely find a company that's going to treat her with that same level of, you know, tour series disc royalties. I would imagine how it is is like. Maybe it might not be so much guaranteed money, but I would bet like the amount disc. of royalties you get, plus you get a star team disc and stuff like that. I would right. imagine you're, you're going to be making more money on the star team. Right. She could find another company. Probably. That could give her that. One thing with her versus Valerie, if you wanted to straight up compare, is Valerie has a lot more upside because she has a lot more of her career left. Sure. Over Ellen. Uh, but and Maybe that's what it came down to. It could have. I just don't see why it's one or the other. And. Who knows? What's Maybe going they on. have like a very specific like we only sponsored this many people. Right. Speaking know. of the Manda Hanna sisters, though, we did have Alexis moving from Innova to Discraft. Yeah. In the past, Valerie has been the slightly better of the two, but slightly they, older, right? Yes, but they, I believe, one of them slightly older, probably Valerie. So. But they're they're both very competitive. Yeah. So this is still a great pickup for Discraft. Sure. Um, and it's something that's like they're investing in their future of FPO there. Uh, she's also going to be on full-time tour with Valerie this season. So I think it'll be interesting to see how both of them perform. Um, whenever they've showed up to pro tour events, one or the other have popped off. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, you, you better get used to hearing their names because yeah. we're going to be hearing it a lot. Uh, one thing that was, I mean, almost guaranteed was Austin Hannum went to Prodigy. Yeah. It's all coming. Yeah, shocker there. This one did surprise me. Thomas Gilbert to Prodigy. Yeah. I was expecting Dynamic Disc, because I don't know about you. I mean, I'm just like, when is Dynamic going to sign somebody? Like, Yeah. Like, they're, they don't have anybody. They don't have any really big names. Uh, they One thing that I thought was surprising was they're coming out with Eric McCabe is retooling the judge, and they're making an Eric McCabe judge, an EMAC judge. So, uh, I saw that. And there was some outrage online. About, like, why is he getting another signature disc? Because, I mean, I think they... I mean, he's not really playing anymore. Well, who else is he giving it to? That's what I mean. I think McCabe's name still sells discs more than... You have the dynamic. EMAC truth. You know what right. I mean? They're, they were, People were saying, they're like, why... I wonder what they're doing to the disc. The judge is, like, one of my favorite players of all time. I don't know what it is, but... One disc of the year. Yeah. They're revolutionizing something about it, is what they were saying. So, Eric's changing something about it to make it more for him. But, yeah, there's some people on Facebook groups that were like... You know, it is interesting. Why are we doing this? Why are we giving him Does another Emac one? Does even play? Like, no, he doesn't play anymore. Yeah. He just designs courses. But correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't he the only world champion on their roster right now? <laughs> yeah. So that might be it. I mean, it could literally be that simple. Yeah. But people were a little upset that they're like, "Why aren't we supporting players who are actually on tour right now? Why? Why are you redesigning a disc for him?" Yeah, I mean, he's got he's got his foot in it dynamic pretty good. Yeah. So. Uh, another thing about the Gilbert contract, though, going back to Prodigy, is that it, his contract is said to include a sports psychologist and a trainer. Access to a sports psychologist yeah, 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 and a trainer, yeah. yeah. Which is 
super cool. I, I don't know if Prodigy has gotten somebody in house or if they're literally just like going to pay for you to. I would imagine they're going to pay because he's in right. Canada and they're in Georgia. Right. So that's that's my guess too, which is like. But that's cool to include that in a contract. That is a cool thing to throw in your contract. I don't know. Like, I feel like that's something that Prodigy can throw on their contract and like how many players are actually going to utilize that. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, especially like the sports psychiatrist. That was one of the things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that for golf is, could be huge. Or psychologist. Or psychologist. Sports psychologist. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. That could be interesting. I think, I think it's a very, like Prodigy's always had a pretty modern approach and pretty progressive, like innovative approach to like things they do. Uh, I mean, their company, I know they do really well in Europe. They never really latched on in the U.S. a ton. Um, they're very regional. Right. They go there, to like Tennessee around. There Chris are places Dickerson. that love Prodigy. It's just, yeah, it's very spotty. But their company does seem to to do some stuff that is like very much ahead of the game. And like, yeah. this is this is an interesting play. I like it. Sticking on the Prodigy topic, we also had Heather Young sign an extension with Prodigy. But mm. the big part of that was she was promoted to their core team. Yes. Which again, you know, the future of FPO, I think FPO is a few years away from getting to where MPO is as far as parity goes. To where right now they show up to an event, most likely Paige is winning. If she doesn't, most likely Cat is. Right. A few years from now, I think you're going to have, you know, there's going to be Paige is still going to be in the scene. Cat's still going to be on the scene. You're going to have Haley right. King, Evelina Salonen, Henna Bloomros, Valerie Mandejano, you know, Heather Young. Yeah. There's a chance that there's literally going to be like you're going into FPO tournaments and they're going to almost be more exciting than MPO tournaments, possibly. I think both. I think both sides are going to continue having more and more parity. Yeah, it's we might we might be having a bet at this time next year that I don't think Paige finishes in the top three all year. I would never take that bet this year, but oh, we'll see how things develop. I'm pretty unless something shocking happens. I'm pretty confident I could take that next year. <laughs> probably. Yeah, I probably wouldn't offer. It next year. <laughs> but I'm just saying the parity could get up to that point. It's true. So we're basically left with two question marks, or big question marks for me. We have James Conrad. James Conrad. He has not officially announced MVP. Just it's officially most likely. Exit. It's most likely going to be MVP. Everything we've been hearing, yeah, suggests that. So that one, we kind of have it wrapped up, but it hasn't been official. The mm. other bigger question, well, not yeah. even bigger question mark, but bigger Ezra. confusion is Ezra Aderhold. Easy. So he's announced that he's re-signing with OTB. He's still with them. You know, some people think that's going to be his main sponsor. Uh, uh I don't think so. Yeah. He's going to have a manufacturer. He's too good not to, uh, and he has too much promise not to in social media too. Um, he did drop a little hint in his Instagram photo, um, where he took a picture that originally he was throwing a uh, Discmania P2. Gee, this confused me to no end. Yeah, he took a, di a picture where he was originally throwing a Discmania P2, and then photoshopped it to be throwing a Dynamic Disc Warden. Yeah. But then in his caption, he said, expect the unexpected. Don't believe everything you see. So it's like. <laughs> so it tells and, us nothing. And it seems like he just, that was just a sick joke. He's just misdirecting us. Yeah, that was just a great troll. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think it's kind of funny if he's just trolling. It, it would, however, I, someone in our Discord, um, and I can never find this post. If, you, if you've seen this post, please like let us know somehow. But someone said on Facebook, or in a live stream or something, Dynamic Disc said that this offseason they offered a player the largest contract they've ever offered anyone. And so people are speculating that that is Ezra Aderhold and that that's like their last ditch effort to get someone this offseason. Because if you look at it, like, who else could they be talking about? Either the person declined them or... Good chance that happened. Or it's Ezra. Because, yeah, I mean, or they Conrad. Might... It could be Sneaky Conrad. I could yeah. not see him with Dynamic. I could I... see him with MVP more somehow, but... Yeah, I'm trying to think who else they could have offered. I mean, there's nobody else they would have offered that massive of a deal. No. It's probably so I'm wondering Ezra. if, a, yeah, so that's a good chance that it could be they offered it to Ezra, whether or not he took it, who knows. Um, if you had, if you're a betting man, you're putting a million dollars on it. I don't know why I went so high, but you're putting a million dollars on it. Who, where's he going? I mean, the photo... <sighs> Photoshopping the dynamic onto that putter, like, it just doesn't make any sense. So you go in dynamic? You think it's dynamic? Well, it's the only thing that, like... It's the only hint we really have. The only hint we have, so I'd have to if I was betting a million dollars. But it, it doesn't make any sense. Because if, like, if, like, he already knows he was going to dynamic, he was trying to tease it, but, like, that's so obvious. Like, it's not even, like, subtle. Unless he just expected people to not realize it was photoshopped. Yeah, you gotta be better than that, Ezra. <laughs> So you're going dynamic? Yeah. 
I think I'm sticking to my guns. I think I'm going. I I had said Innova or Discraft. Innova, I think, is just bleeding too much right now. I think they're just they've let so many players go. Or I don't even know if players are choosing to. We've also seen several comments about like maybe if you treated your players better, they'd stay type things on Instagram. Like players publicly oh, saying it. Nate Perkins called him out. That's who it was. I think I'm going with Discraft. I think I'm rolling with Discraft. I think Ezra is going Discraft this year. Probably Dynamic Disc, but I want to be different. Fair enough. Yeah, I will agree with you. There's nothing, no reason to believe it. The only hint we have is... Dynamic disc. But it is time for the fan favorite segment, Trevor's Trivia. What do you got for me this week? We're going to do another Who Am I. We have an FPO and an MPO like usual. I think I'm, I am try so hard to make these really difficult. And, and Paul so far. Yeah. But in the end, does it even really matter? All right. The, the, the issue is that a lot of times you know some random fact about a player that I didn't realize you knew, and then it just gives it away. I'm like, well, that's a bummer. <laughs> Like, you know where somebody was from, typically. I think these people are from random enough places. There's no way you're like, oh, I know that. Okay, so we're going to start with the FPO. Okay. First hint. Don't guess until you're completely confident. Okay. I am from Caldwell, Idaho. Thank goodness. Gosh, I had no idea. I have 93 career wins. That's a lot. Since my first Worlds in 2010, I haven't finished outside the top 10 at that event. Where's Idaho located? It's like Midwest. Pretty close to like Kentucky and Ohio? Yeah. Rebecca Cox. No. Dang it. There's one. Eh. Who was it? I'm, I'll keep going. I'll give you some more hints. Oh, there's more hints. Yeah. Oh, you stopped. I thought that was all I the hints. I was giving you a little bit of time. Oh, well, shoot. I thought I wasn't confident at all in that. I just thought that was my last hint. Oh, my gosh. You gotta ask. My best finish on the Pro Tour last season was second. I changed sponsors in 2019. My rating just eclipsed my previous best, which I achieved in 2012. Mm, Sarah Hokum. There it is. <laughs> that was the next hint. I won the 2012 world title. Oh. Yeah. I wouldn't have known if she won 2012 or not. I, I didn't remember when she was a world champion. Well, how did that hint... How did you just get that that last one? Then no, it was the MVP when she jumped. Oh, MVP. okay. I was okay. trying to think of who was a big deal changing sponsor that you would have been able to find that easily. And it was Sarah Hokum. And know. I also was like, I have no idea much about Sarah Hokum. Yeah, so her rating up. was like she it, it hadn't gotten as high as it was in 2012 until just this past June or something like that. All right. So are we giving me a half point for that? Maybe half point. Maybe a fourth point. Fourth point. All right. MPO player here. I am from Wyoming, Michigan. <laughs> I just choked on my water. There you go. I'm rated 1025. I have 17,000 in career earnings. I placed 52nd at USDGC in my sophomore season in 2019. 2018 was my first season in Open. I already gave that hint away in the last one, I guess. I placed 48th at the Green Mountain Championship this past season, but in the top 10 at USDGC. My best Pro Tour finish was fourth last year. Oof, I got a lot of hints off without getting anything away. I like that. <laughs> I'm clueless right now. Wow, I've only got a couple more hints left. I have 12 going. career wins. That doesn't help me. I am in Hunter and Trevor's early top 20. Kyle Klein. Yep. Okay. When you said USDGC top 10, that's who I wanted to go with. But for some reason, when you said, like, Michigan, I was thinking – um Terry Roethlisberger. He's the one that popped off a of D-Glow, right? <laughs> That's so funny. I almost picked him for one of the players. He's the one that popped off a of D-Glow, right? Is that him? Or am I thinking of someone else? I don't remember. Um, not... When Paul went 18 down, there was some random guy. that yeah, Willie so. Prince. Willie oh. Prince. So never mind. <laughs> that wouldn't even matter. Well, there you have it. Oh, just those two? Yeah. No, oh, that was a quick one. One of each. So I got one-fourth of a point. No, I got the second point. You got the second one. So I got a point and a fourth. Yeah. Really, it should start at the amount of points there is for hints and then just go down as you need more hints, to be honest. Well, we don't really keep points here. It's like uh, who's somebody's it keeping somebody's keeping running total. Uh, so there's not a ton to talk about in the second half. Uh, normally we have another like topic to bring up. I actually did see one in Discord that I'll bring up after this. But over the week we saw that the PDGA actually this might have been today. PDGA is a nas- wow. What and the heck? Nice. Just what, what did I just say? The PDGA <laughs> is adding. They've announced they're adding a fourth major to the schedule going forward. 
starting in 2022. Nate Heinold was, uh, when he got onto the board in 2017, this is something he's pushed for since, allegedly, according to the Ultra World article. Um, so he's a big factor in this going forward. Uh, big reason is they say it aligns disc golf with a lot of other similar sports. Tennis, golf, they have four majors. Right. Four major so lineup. we'll have the world, U.S., European, and then insert other worlds, which like I'm trying to think. So like ball- They basically said, like a, right now they said there's a European major, which is normally the European Open or Kona Peach Day. Kona Peach Day we haven't seen in a while. I think it's been or, two years. And then there's... And then U.S. and Worlds. It used to be Australian Open sometimes. Yeah. The year Paul had his Grand Slam, there was a fifth. I think Kona Peach Day and European Open might have been together. I think there was two in Europe. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they're going to a four, wor- four major. The most interesting thing I read about this was they were unsure if it's going to be stroke play or match play or like how the format would work, or really any other details about the event. But they did specify the stroke and match play, which I thought was interesting. A ma- Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't mind a match play major. That would be cool. I've I don't always really said know there- how it would work, per se, because... I've always said there needs to be a big match play event on the tour. And like, should I don't, it be a major? I don't, well, I don't think it fits on the pro tour, because like th- that doesn't really make sense for the pro tour, so maybe it does need to be a major. I mean, it's pretty epic. Think about having. It would be sick. Think about having your a, a major come down to a duel, basically. Like, you no, could, it would be cool. Don't get me wrong. I just like. I love. Should it, it start as an A tier and we test it out a little bit? No, I, I actually love it. What a, match play is not something that hasn't been tested. I mean, That's also true. But the, the, that was like kind of irrelevant. There could have even been ulti world throwing that in there. It, it was just like a. I would love a match play major. Um. I mean, it's like we need to have more presidents cups. The biggest thing to me, is is this actually a good change for the sport what does it do for the sport what like is this i don't think is this a big thing is I, having a fourth major well i think the more majors the better within that threshold of four i don't think you want too many majors or else they lose prestige yeah. but like other sports have four and it works so if we can have another major and majors are great people pay attention to them then yeah let's have another major as long as it's run but well, what does it add another major event to look forward to it's good for the fans it's good for the players there's another prestigious event that they're able to win and like i said you're not overdoing it because other sports do four so we can do four i, I mean four is a good amount i think the idea of it's good the th- only thing i don't like about this is that there's so much up in the air when they're making this decision and they're just announcing as a fourth major it's not like you're taking something that's already a prestigious event and making it and turn it into a major. You're basically the sport's it, so young though. There's time to create an event that's run really well and with their, it can build prestige. I just think it depends on the tournament itself, whatever it ends up being. Yeah. The date, where it is. Well, yeah, I mean, and I, even even the location, I think factors. Well, into I agree. It. I think we we need an early year major, not super early, but like April, May. Yeah, I mean that's like the Masters. Because right now, what are we April. looking at? We got Worlds, which is like like I august all, Ju- june to august range right european opens june normally usdgc october well then, i mean the pdga is not completely dumb like they're i'm i would bet they're cooking up an april yeah like march they're to not april gonna put it in May. november but i don't know i i just think it there's a lot of factors that they got to get right to make it good well, sure, but if they're if they're going to call it a major i would hope they're putting good effort it in. could just be like my mentality but like a major to me should already have some history because it's a major. You know what I mean? You can't have that mentality. Sport's too young. But there's a, there's tournaments that already have history you can turn into a major. Which one would you use? Uh, I mean, when I think of April, the first thing that comes to my mind is glass blown. I don't think that would they be can, a good major. They can, they can turn courses that already exist into that major, though, and those courses have history. Green Mountain Championships, I don't know what that's like in April, but that'd be a sick every that's what year I'm saying. major like, course. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's course, like, I see what you're saying, but like, you got to remember, they're probably going to use courses that already exist, so that carries some. So let's history. look at it this way, right? We got European Open, and which, if you title, if you title it, like titles go a long way. Like if the U.S. Open didn't exist, what well, technically doesn't? If you called a disc golf event the U.S. Open and completely backed it as a PDGA as a major, people would freak out true. because of the title U.S. Open. People don't. People freak out about the World Championships because you get to be the world champion. Does that mean you were the best player in the world that year? Maybe not. You just won but a you were a world, Yeah, but you were the world champion. Titles go a lot longer true. away than you think they do. That is true. Why do we put so much emphasis on the world champion? Because the title. Which creates the pressure, and therefore, if you win it, you like get to have that title, and there's like more pressure than any other event, just like winning the USDGC. The but like, why? USDGC, I think, is harder to win. Yeah, I agree. 
Some years, maybe not, because the world rotates. Why, world, world why champion. aren't we? The title of world champion goes a long way. Crazy. And there's like entire manufacturers that will only give you certain things. And every manufacturer. Yeah. A lot, yes, I'm saying like if you are a world champion, you get different treatment and like a disc that says world champion. Like it's a big deal. Yeah. It's a big deal. So do you like majors that rotate like worlds or do you want to see this new major be a like pick a course where they're every year course? Well, you're the thing. European. The European major, opens at the Beast. Right. So the Beast might be gone. It's not this year. They're going to be there this year, but there's rumor of oh, really? it being taken out. I forget what it was for, but the park basically wants that space for something else. Well, I'm trying to think like on the PGA Tour, like the PGA Championship, the US Open, the only one that doesn't change is is the masters the other ones what i like about the pga tour is the majors other than the masters you definitely need like our usdgc where it's always to the same place yeah you know the tradition unlike any other um i like that but i like events that though they change courses they kind of have a bit of a rotation like the us open you know it's going to come back to pebble beach at some point you know um the british open like it's going to be at st andrews eventually again like they always kind of they don't necessarily rotate specifically, but there's courses that they're always going to fall back to. And you're like, wow, like I love watching that event at that course. Like that, that is something that disc golf could do that they're not really doing yet. So basically like I suggested this for collegiate disc golf before where and I think it could work for the worlds where it's like an East coast, Midwest, West coast, right. Europe. That works. Back to East. Yeah. And maybe you just have those maybe I had you have guess, five, four courses. If I had to guess, and I, I had heard this been talked about before but this next major is probably going to be the players championship if i had to guess mm. the title wise mm-hmm. it's gonna be called the players championship that makes sense right i mean that are that that name has prestige i already feel good about it i'm already excited for it exactly and you just spoke it into existence yeah. I, I, think I like that okay if you're listening to pdj and you haven't decided I can see that i can see it's a no-brainer as long as i mean yeah if we're calling it if it's not just some random new because what else do you call a major you can't just call it some certain event and make it a major like we have the european open it's a whole continent the U.S. Championships hold, and then the world, like they're describing in huge things that That's you're true. conquering. So it's got to be something like the players you're conquering, like the group of players. So the course championship. <laughs> so that's like that. It has, like it. It has like to it. work that way. Okay, and yeah, I mean that even works as if it, if it was match play. Or you know what they might do? The, the other route they could go because in ball golf they have the PGA Championship. It could be the PDGA Championship. I hate that. I, I don't like that as much as the players, but it could happen. So just prepare yourself for that. Yeah, because then, uh, yeah, I don't like that. Because I feel It'll, like that... I would hope they would well, go the Players' Championship route. But either way, they both sound prestigious. Yeah, they both... It'll work. Yeah, they both I'm excited out. about another major. Yeah, I think it's I think it's cool. I think that as long as it's done right, it'll mm-hmm. work out. But I mean, if you think about it, the Kona Peach Day Open was kind of spoken into existence. Same with the Australian Open. But I mean, now that you say it, they're both locations. They're all locations. Yeah. Never thought of it that way. We're not calling it the, the chain breaker, not bowling ball major. I was just looking at stuff on your desk. Yeah. This isn't actually a bowling ball, but it looks like one. Oh. Well, yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay. I'm, I'm backing it now. I like it. All right. Fourth major. Okay. I'm in. We're in. He's all in. I'm all in. I'm sold. <laughs> Players championship. Let's go. Come on. Players 2022. Should we just like, I think it'd be funny if like, we acted like the information was already out there and just made it so popular and made people think it was happening that PDG had no choice. They're like, well, everybody thinks it's a player's championship. We have to make the player's championship. Let's name it. Would that be so funny? It's official. The player's championship the player's happened championship. in 2022 at Paul McBeth's home course right here in Good, Virginia. Yeah. The fourth major. <laughs> you heard it here first. From this the player's championship. Perfect I'm going to tweet it. I'm going to tweet it. Should I tweet it right now live? Yeah. Who's excited for the player's championship in 2022? No. <laughs> at pdj <laughs> yeah can't wait for the players championship at pdj and they're like running around like who leaked it who leaked it? <laughs> that'd be a funny way of leaking things is just trying to guess things that are going to happen and then they, they think it's a leak but you just guessed yeah if you just tweet enough times eventually you'll guess surely right. you'll get one right like you could do that about like james conrad just with one separate account tweet like different accounts tweet he's going to here he's going to here he's going to here and one of them is going to be right and the company's going to freak out great well except for mvp I mean, did you see the james cornrad yeah account? oh that was funny that had me rolling a lot of people thought it was real at first when i glanced at it i did yeah and then i saw his head was corn corn yeah james cornrad <laughs> all right it's time for make that call the final segment here as we wrap the show up basically i give trevor a scenario or a rule that he has to make the call on decide what is the pdj rule in regards to this situation so picture this picture this oh it's my favorite it's my favorite <laughs> words 
you're at a tournament. It's pouring down rain. Mm. Did you play the year at Seco when we were in Hurricane Matthew or whatever it was? It rained during our practice round? No. The tournament got canceled. Oh, no. Okay. No, I, no. But our year, it, it downpour during the right, practice round. Downpour. Rounds. You're in that practice round, but it's a tournament round. I also played at um, NC State that year. Scratch that. NC State. You're playing NC State. Yes, that was the worst rain I've ever played okay. in my life. Playing in the worst rain you've ever seen in your life. Player mm-hmm. on your card pulls out this. Raven. No. because <laughs> Raven's too good. He would never do what I'm about to say. <laughs> uh, a player on your card. We're going to go with. Who is someone on our team? Ryan Shoemate. All right. No, it's a random player, different okay. team. We don't know him. Plays Connor at Ferris State. Who? Connor <laughs> Connor. Connor pulls out this gel-like substance from his bag. Whoa, whoa. Squirts it on his hand. Yeah. Starts rubbing it on, into his hand and then just starts throwing like Amazing. nobody's business. He's using an aid. Yeah, he, he's a, it makes it where he basically is gripping the disc like like there's no rain. Right. So he's throwing all over you. Yeah. Okay. So you're like, well, crap, that's illegal. No yeah, doubt. It's got to be. Out. You go straight to the rule book because you're like, what can I call him on? Mm. You start searching for the rule book. What rule are you calling on? Calling him on? Or is there even a rule you can call him on? Well, this is interesting because, in, I mean, this is like, this comes from baseball a little bit because baseball, like, there's been so, I mean, pitchers to this day will literally put pine tar, like, in plain sight, acting like they're not on a million cameras and get caught for it. It doesn't happen <laughs> that much anymore. Michael Pineda was, like, the last one. He had it, like, on his neck, pine tar. And, like, he was claiming it was sunscreen. You know, it kind of blended in with his skin tone. So, like, it worked. But, like, some guys have tried it in their uh, glove and things like that to get more grip on the ball, you yeah. know, more break. Um, it's like stick them. I mean, there's people up. who would use their snot to do that. Oh, gosh. Yeah, literally. Is that the solution Um, for disc golf? Never mind. Doesn't matter. Keep going. Maybe. So, like, disc golf, this is interesting, though, because you are allowed to, as far as I know, you can wear a glove to grip the disc. Mm. So, like, you are allowed to use things to help your grip of the disc. Um, So, honestly, with that that being said, I'm going to say that's perfectly legal. Because you can use a glove. Surely you can use some kind of sticky substance. You are most likely right. Most likely, so I'm right. I love the PDGA's Q and A section is where I got this one from. I obviously elaborated on it and put mm. Connor and you in the scenario. Okay. But basically, they said the use of grip aid, use of grip aids is acceptable since nothing in the rules. Holy yawn! <laughs> I, I don't really think there's a problem with it. I the use of grip aids is acceptable since nothing in the rules specifically prohibits their use. Now, where I said you might be right is you may need to clean the disc periodically to prevent grip material from building up and adding thickness or weight to the disc, which would then be modifying the uh, disc and make it illegal. Interesting. So. Interesting. Most likely, yeah, it's legal. So if we can generate some type of substance that makes rain yeah. go away, comes again a different day, to- we're fine. Mm, totally. <laughs> That's going to be it for this week's episode, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Hope Has you like the new. put Never Wet on their discs? What is Never Wet? Like, it's like the spray that like completely wicks away rain. No. I mean, someone might have. Should we try that for an episode? We have for to. A, have you episode? ever seen that stuff in action? I've seen. Is it like a, literally? What you, you is it like what you put on the windshield of a car? You could do that. Where, like people put it on like a shoe, and then literally like, you could just dump something on it, and it just like it was never there. It was never wet. Never wet. It's kind of expensive, I think. But like, I don't know if it if it makes the disc slick. It's obviously not going to work. But if it doesn't, like, what are we all doing? We it might have to. to we might. We might have to turn like create a DIY series of how can like we improve our disc golf bags, and we just like put random stuff on our discs and then test them and never what. Test them in theory. That's fascinating. That is. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for this week, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully you like the new desk, the new setup. Hopefully it sounds better, looks better, all of that. Let us know in the comments down below if you're on YouTube or if you're on Apple Podcasts. Leave us a review. We read each and every one of them on both platforms. We really appreciate all of your feedback. Also, feel free to DM us or message us on Discord. There's also a podcast chat where you can chat with tons of other people who also listen to the podcast or jump into the podcast suggestions. That's where the desk idea even came from. Uh, if you want to you know, give us your feedback in another way, uh, we engage in all of those. Do not forget about the junior grant if that applies to you or to someone you know. You want to apply for that. Um, again, applications will open up tomorrow, January the 8th. And I believe that is all we have for this week. We'll talk to you guys next week.